Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on 2020 and 21 transfer pricing trends in Germany. Today, we have the honor to have Carlton Smith, a TPA Global member, giving us insights on the transfer pricing trends in Germany. Please be advised that you can send your question using the chat function, and we will try our best to answer the question before the session ends. So, without any further ado, the, set, the floor is yours, Carsten. Thank you, Victor. Good afternoon to the audience. So, we have prepared a slide deck with, uh, covering, which is covering uh, some uh, developments in German transfer pricing. Um, so, relatively new. So, some of these uh, developments. Uh, result from the last week and um, yeah so let's let's start with this general overview uh, I want to introduce you to the background of these developments and um, give you some insight in three main areas there is uh, some changes in the foreign tax law secondly some changes in the general tax code and uh, lastly, some uh, adjustments in the administrative guidelines 2020 that has been published already in December last year. Surprisingly, before the uh, connecting law was uh, established now in, in May and June. So that is uh, the program for, for this afternoon. And I suggest that we will start with the background. As you can imagine, uh, Germany is strongly following the OECD and G20 developments on BEPS. So I have problem with switching to the next slide. The connection seems to be not perfect. Apologize for that. Now it went to, to slide number three. Yeah, um, the background is uh, the latest developments on, on BEPS actions 8 to 10 and the central pricing guidelines 2017. Um, Germany has um, adopted two laws in uh, May and June. Um, I suggest we avoid these, you will see that uh, difficult names of these uh, laws. Um, that's always funny to see uh, how creative the legislator in Germany is. Um, that is typical German behavior to give uh, each law a very specific uh, name. Um, on page four, Uh, still slow moving. Now it seems to be much faster. Um, in the foreign tax law, uh, the background is as follows. Um, the previous paragraph one Section three of the uh, uh, German foreign tax law was um, covering uh, a lot of different topics in, 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 in one paragraph. And that was extremely difficult to, uh, to follow that, that uh, legislation. Um, so there was um, within 12 sentences discussion of all transfer pricing methods, there was a discussion about adjustments, there was a discussion about ranges uh, in, in benchmark studies, there was a discussion of uh, relocation of function, all that within 12 sentences that was really difficult and um, one task of this um, legislative process was to um, uh, clean that up. 
Now the German legislator has introduced some uh, separate paragraphs um, and has split it, this uh, famous paragraph three with a, 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 in, 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 uh, in three separate uh, uh, sections. Um, new in this uh, foreign tax law is the price adjustment clause. We will see that later on. And uh, this will be uh, applicable as of January 1st next year. First of all, um, the arm's length principle was established by a definition. What is uh, the, 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 the arm's length price that was not yet included in, in German law uh, so far. Now the German legislator has added uh, a chapter on the arm's length principle in law, not only in, in an ordinance or in a administrative guidelines or by referring to the um, OECD model treaty. Now it, is, uh, it has been established in, in the German Foreign Tax Act. Um, that is not uh, yeah, different from what we already had in place. Um, so uh, that is more or less uh, a confirmation how the arm's length principle was uh, applied uh, in the past. Um, it is linked to the OECD transfer pricing guideline. Um, the contractual arrangement is uh, just the starting point for, for your analysis. Um, relevant uh, function, risk, and assets used, um, the characteristics of assets, the economic circumstances, and the business strategy. So the contractual arrangement um, will be included in your analysis, but is just the starting point. Ideally, the contractual arrangement is in line with um, with the economic circumstances and the strategy, etc., and um, so the actual behavior is uh, then uh, yeah, in sync with with the IC with your intercompany contract. Um, so that is not uh, something what was changed, just confirmed by by law. Uh, for us uh, within TPA. Uh, I have here the picture of uh, the magic uh, triangle. Um, that we use that picture since uh, almost 20 years. So the legal reality, the economic reality, and the accounting reality should be in sync. Um, any deviations from that will trigger a risk. And that, at the end, has been confirmed by the German uh, legislation. The functional risk analysis is now also being covered by law. Um, you will identify that as uh, being the same as you know that from the OECD transfer pricing guidelines. Relevant are the functions performed, risk taken, assets used, uh, just the same as uh, uh, on, on the page before. So that is. Uh, I don't think a, a critical point, and uh, so that's uh, more or less only uh, the legal reference now for further analysis. Um, a specific new uh, section is introduced for the comp comparability analysis, um, and a little bit. Funny is uh, one expectation uh, of the tax administration, a taxpayer should reflect um, his specific case in the case that there are no comparable transactions. So a reflection is expected. There is no def de uh, definition. What is a reflection? Is that just think about it or is that a a detailed um, separate analysis. So that is um, a point um, 
yeah, we expect that this will uh, be um, worked out uh, by by new administrative guidelines um, because otherwise it's a point of uh, of uh, yeah unclear uh, unclear situation. But not not a critical point at the end. Um, I think that uh, could be solved uh, when you have discussions with your tax administration in Germany. Um, a new position has been introduced um, regarding locational advantages. So in the past, we had a couple of uh, discussions with the tax administration in tax audit cases. Um, even if a taxpayer has argued that in China location savings or location advantages need to be um, uh, uh, yeah, considered in, in uh, preparing a transfer pricing model, um, the German administration so far did reject any um, uh, discussions about that. Now um, there is a general uh, change in in, the, in this view. Um, location advantages, uh, for instance, uh, in China, need to be exam uh, examined by the taxpayer, and if necessary, the German tax administration will have to accept that. If if the, if, if your audit trail. Um, is uh, based on valid arguments. Um, uh, location savings in China will have to be accepted in Germany. That is new, and um, um, yeah, we will see how that will work uh, in in future discussions with the with the tax administration. Next slide. The timing um, that is from my point of view not even 100% clear because relevant is the time of the agreement when you have uh, closed the transaction uh, with, on, with, uh, with a related party uh, in your group. The time when you have closed the transaction. So um, The, the point not 100% clear is that, um, or what not has been discussed in, 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 uh, in this uh, legislative process is um, um, the price setting or outcome testing uh, perspective. And that is not, not clearly excluded. Is uh, only the perspective uh, of price setting relevant also for um, uh, defending your uh, transfer pricing policy, or is the outcome testing perspective at the end of the year, for example, uh, also uh, accepted uh, by the tax inspectors in Germany? That is not 100% clear. From my uh, point of view, um, it is covered um, and uh, will need to be. Uh, yeah, uh, worked out with more guidance in in the new uh, administrative guidelines on on this specific section in in in, in the law. So I think that is a critical point. Um, how the individual tax inspector will um, uh, will have. Uh, yeah, what the, the, the individual perspective of, uh, of the tax inspector will be. New in Germany is the best method rule. You know that in some other countries already since, uh, since a couple of years, in the US, for example. Um, in Germany, you as a taxpayer have to define the best method being applicable for your transaction. You have to provide uh, an argumentation and uh, uh, you need to substantiate uh, this choice of method. Um, 
that is uh, new in Germany. Uh, funny is the, the, uh, the fact that this best message rule has already been introduced by the administrative guidelines end of last year in law, introduction in law now in uh, end of May uh, this year. So that is ju just a side mark. Um, so the, the, the hierarchy between the methods starting with uh, cup method, with resell minus, with cost plus uh, as, as the standard methods, then the TNMM or the profit split as the profit uh, oriented method um, should not be applicable in anymore um, because you have the choice uh, to, to, to define the best method uh, based on your individual case. Um, Interesting, and that is um, a point referring to the administrative guidelines 2020. You, as a taxpayer, have to um, uh, define your yeah your method, the best method for your transaction. On the other hand, the tax inspector has the right to challenge you on that and to uh, build his own view on the best method. So he can, he, theoretically, theoretically, he can come up with his own, own ideas, not the cost plus, for example, but uh, uh, resale minus uh, should be the better, the, the better method for, for this individual case. And then you have uh, uh, to provide um, the relevant informations to support the argumentation of the tax inspector. So you have defined for your case the cost plus method. The tax inspector will challenge you and come up with this reason minus as the best method. And then you as the taxpayer have to support the tax inspector with um, information and documents supporting the, um, uh, the reason minus method. So that is a point for me a little bit critical because that is not clearly defined um, under what conditions and under, under what circumstances this situation uh, can occur. And where is the, the, the boundary between both uh, perspectives? So that will be maybe a, a critical point in, in future discussions with uh, with tax inspectors, um, even in cases when you use uh, database studies and the tax inspector will have the view, um, maybe uh, uh, internal comparable will be uh, the, the better um, support for your position. So we expect here some challenging situations in the future. Um, adjustments. I think that is not uh, critical. So there is a section uh, implemented uh, in case of differences between the conditions between your own situation and the uh, situation of your comparable you need to prepare or you need to add a, 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 an adjustment on, on your com set of comparables. So that is, from my perspective, uh, nothing new. Um, a typical German thing is the uh, hypothetical arm's length comparison. In case uh, you will not have any comparables, you will need to prepare a hypothetical external comparison. Um, and um, yeah, that has to be based on, on, on valuations. Uh, for instance, on, on the discount uh, cash flow method, and um, that is uh, not new in Germany, but that has also been implemented in, in German law now. Um, interesting is the discussion about uh, bandwidth determinations. Um, clear is the statement there is not one 
or not one right uh, value, but uh, a bandwidth or range of uh, comparables. Um, here is now also implemented how to work with uh, differences in uh, comparability situations. Um, the interquartile range, definition of the interquartile range, nothing new already uh, covered by existing uh, guidelines. Um, the critical point here is the German perspective how to adjust comparables or not, no, how to adjust your actual situation with comparables um, if your actual result is uh, in, in case of an operating margin, margin discussion, if your result is outside of the range. That is the, the, the point here. Um, and we have here a, a conflict uh, between the two um, relevant laws um, because one law is uh, stating um, in case your actual result is outside the range, um, the result will be adjusted to the median of uh, the, the range. And the other law is stating um, that any result within the range uh, should be possible, not, not even the median. Um, um, also, uh, results or comparables or positions with, within the range uh, to the advantage of the taxpayer. So, here is a, a conflict between two laws. And um, from my point of view, the decisions of the European Court of Justice on, on, on the Hornbach and the SGI cases um, are not um, worked in properly because uh, these two decisions uh, state that the correction uh, should be possible to the most favorable value of the bandwidth and not to the median, which could be to the disadvantage of the uh, taxpayer. Um, the German uh, approach is to go to the median, and um, I think that will trigger some more discussions in the future. Uh, again, not easy uh, to perform in practice is um, the bandwidth determination in case of hypothetical third party comparisons. Um, so that is uh, uh, a simple average uh, out of the minimum price of the payer and the maximum price of the beneficiary. Um, so that could also trigger discussions uh, because, uh, yeah, you know, the minimum price or the maximum price based on valuations, uh, valuation uh, methods uh, could be uh, seen or interpreted uh, differently uh, between the taxpayer and the uh, tax inspector. So we expect or already have discussions on that uh, in, in, in the daily practice. Um, from my perspective, the most critical point in this Foreign Tax Act or in this change of the Foreign Tax Act is the uh, discussion on the transfer of functions because um, that was already included in this uh, old um, section three of paragraph one. Um, we have uh, an ordinance on the transfer of functions. We have administrative guidelines on the transfer of functions. And now these new um, section three B of the Foreign Tax Act um, is covering these uh, transfer of functions very in a very very limited um, uh, uh, way because um, they have um, only included or in the past we had uh, some opening clauses uh, 
when a transfer of function, including uh, a taxable event, will not occur. Um, so, for example, a, a, a transfer of a routine function um, with a remuneration on the cost plus, uh, without a intangible good being involved in that transaction, um, that has not been seen as a transfer of function, so no exit tax um, uh, did uh, have been charged. Um, that was one exemption. We had a couple of other exemptions. A duplication of a function, for example, um, was not a taxable event and some more. Now, in law, we have only this one opening clause included. Uh, being the transfer of a routine function based on a cost plus uh, without any intangible goods uh, being involved. Um, and that triggers the attention um, because the question now is uh, what is with all the, the other uh, uh, opening clauses and exemption rules. Um, what I expect is that um, the other legislative element, the ordinance on the transfer of function will be changed in the near future. And um, the existing opening clauses uh, will be um, yeah, abolished. So that's, that's a negative uh, development here in Germany um, because um, that will uh, have, uh, that, that will uh, lead to uh, many more cases uh, of, of excess taxes being charged uh, on, on the transfer of functions. Um, so the opening clauses um, yeah, I mean, we, we have been able uh, to use that in, in, in most of our cases um, will not be available anymore. So I think that is an open point here, and from my perspective, the most critical point uh, in this uh, change of the Foreign Tax Act. So we need to spend a lot of attention to, to, the, to the developments on that. Then not surprising is the implementation of the DEMPI concept. Um, that is a new rule here in this uh, foreign tax law. Um, from my perspective, that is not a critical point because Germany has uh, followed the OECD uh, uh, transfer pricing guidelines. Um, and uh, yeah, I do not see any uh, differences between. Uh, both concepts. So the OECD transfer pricing guidelines has been implemented uh, yeah, more or less 100% to, to German law. Um, that is complementing the legislative process. Germany typically um, is establishing three elements to uh, provide guidance on uh, specific topics. The first uh, um, element is um, the law itself, in this case, the foreign tax law. So that's the legal basis um, for further concretion and, and for further guidance, um, uh, a specific ordinance will uh, be established that has also a, uh, uh, the um, uh, yeah the uh, position of of of, of 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 a law and um, the third element is administrative guidelines and administrative guidelines typically are binding only for tax administrations and not for the taxpayer so. Um, the legislator has authorized the Ministry of Finance um, to prepare an ordinance on the arm's length principle to complete this uh, legislative process. That will be 
Now we have elections in September. I expect that uh, there is already some draft in the pipeline, but uh, that will not be adopted before the elections in September. I expect that more for, for spring next year. Uh, new is the price adjustment clause. Um, that is, from my perspective, different from what we see uh, in, in other countries. Um, it has the quality of an income adjustment standard. Um, the assumption is that if your profit uh, it deviates too much from um, from your uh, budgeted or planned profit, um, then it is assumed that some uncertainties have existed uh, at the time when you have um, determined your transfer price, and uh, it is assumed that between third parties a price adjustment clause would have been uh, uh, established. So that is the assumption here in law. Um, in case you don't have a price adjustment clause in your intercompany contract, um, it will be, um, uh, yeah, assumed that uh, for the following seven years, uh, or the standard applies for the following seven years, and um, a tax adjustment will be um, performed in the eighth year in case of significant deviations. And the, uh, the threshold is more than 20% uh, deviation. Um, interesting is a, a case, for example, if you have a deviation in the startup um, situation, of more than 20 percent in the first or the second year for me the question is is then an adjustment in the eight in in in, in year number eight uh, to be performed um and that is not clear to me because uh, deviation year one in a startup situation uh, happens typically or could happen uh, why the adjustment um, only in, 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 in year number eight. So I'm looking forward to some more guidance on this, um, on this new rule um, because uh, I expect major problems with that uh, in, in, uh, in the practical application. Um, on the other hand, no adjustment is required if you as a taxpayer um, can argue that the development or the deviation was not uh, predictable, um, or in case you can argue we have um, uh, uh, taken into account uh, those uncertainties, or we have a license agreement in place which is absorbing uh, this type of uh, devi deviation as well. So I think that's not. Uh, clear how to perform the um, adjustment, but you have uh, possibilities to argue against uh, those adjustments. As already mentioned, applicable as of uh, January 1st next year. Uh, then let's go to the general tax code. Um, there is in a nutshell, only one um, major point with relevance for transfer pricing. It is the legal implementation of uh, advanced pricing agreements. There's a new paragraph 89A of the General Tax Code, and um, this new paragraph is dealing with uh, the performance of advanced pricing agreements. Um, in the past, Germany has introduced uh, the regime of uh, APAs already in 2005, um, and uh, that was based on a, a fact sheet or a kind of admin administrative guideline um, from 2006. 
now the intention was to uh, include that um, instrument of APA in law to improve that to express to express the the German view of being uh, an APA as uh, an, an important instrument for uh, dispute resolution. I think that is in, in general positive. Um, and um, I do not see here major critical points uh, in that specific new uh, paragraph. Um, that might be different to other countries. A double taxation treaty is mandatory, um, including a mutual agreement clause in the double taxation treaty. And um, that has to base on Article 25 of the OECD model treaty. Um, not 100% clear is, uh, and that is the wording of this new law. Um, because they state only for new business transactions is an application for an APA possible. Um, the question is now what is with ongoing permanent transactions being already in place? Um, is that covered by this uh, law or not? I would expect yes, because uh, otherwise it would not make sense uh, to to implement this, this tool uh, as a dispute resolution instrument. Um, and if we look to the um, uh, background documents to, to this legislative process, I see this situation as covered as well. Um, the rest is um, not different from what we see. Uh, in the OECD guidelines in general or from, from other countries, um, usually a period of five years. Um, a risk of double taxation uh, must exist. There must be uh, uh, some probability that this double taxation can be avoided by the APA. Uh, relatively strict is Germany on the application fee that must be fixed and paid uh, upfront. Then a list of uh, details to be provided uh, in, in case you apply for an APA. I think that is not much different to, to what we see in other countries as well and to what we see in, uh, in, the, in the OECD guidelines. The fees this morning, earlier this morning, I had a look to the fees in other countries. Um, the fee in Germany is uh, 30,000 euro for an initial application. In the US, for example, um, the fee is more than 100,000 US dollar for an initial application. Um, in the US, the renewal fee is. Uh, as far as I have in mind, uh, more than 60,000. In Germany, it's 15,000 euros. So, yeah, way lower than, than in other countries. Maybe you, the US is an extreme in that. Um, there's a, a, a regime for small, medium sized companies. So, the fee is between 7,000 and 10,000 euros. Um, so, just for giving you a feeling what what uh, level of or what is the fee level on that. Um, that is complementing information on situations what is or in, 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 in what cases uh, an APA procedure will fail. Um, that is, in my view, not different to what we see in other countries. Um, we have uh, the possibility in Germany to extend uh, an existing APA upon request. We have um, a rollback mechanism implemented. 
So that is typically used in tax audit cases uh, for solving your tax audit situation in the past and to uh, define a way forward to the uh, present and to the future. So the rollback more or less in line with uh, what the OECD is um, uh, stating on that in the OECD transfer pricing guidelines. Applicable immediately after the announcement of the new law, that uh, means uh, as of now, not not uh, as of next year, January next year, as uh, the case of the foreign tax law. Now, if you apply for an APA in July, the new rule will be applied. Um, finally, some insight on the administrative guidelines 2020, as already mentioned, published, adopted already um, at the end of December. Um, that is an overview of the existing guidelines in Germany. We have guidelines in place uh, dated from 1983. We have guidelines in place on dated uh, uh, from uh, 2005. Now we have a new uh, uh, additional guideline uh, dated 2020. We have a set of three different guidelines. Um, and for me, it is a, a missed occasion to merge them in one because now we have to put all three guidelines on our desk um, for reviewing specific situations. So the new guideline 2020 is just replacing um, uh, the, uh, the guidelines 2005 uh, partly. Um, the rest of the guidelines 2005 will be in place or will stay in place and the same applies for the guidelines to, uh, 1983. So in total more than 140 pages of uh, of uh, of guidance on specific transfer pricing situation and again it is a missed occasion to clean that up and to uh, prepare one document including all relevant topics the background yeah again um, some adjustments according to the OECD transfer pricing guidelines uh, uh, 2017. Um, we had some changes in the sections 90 uh, of the general tax code and this uh, profit accrual recording ordinance. Uh, that is the second element as, uh, as explained. And now finally uh, some adjustments in the guidelines uh, uh, needed to be um, uh, yeah, inserted. At this occasion, unfortunately, the German tax administration has tightened uh, some documentation requirements. We will see that in the next uh, slide. We have uh, extended obligations to cooperate and submit documents. Um, Germany um, has domestic retention periods extended to foreign countries. So if, for example, we have a retention period in Germany of 10 years um, and in the, uh, yeah, in, the, in the other country, the retention period is by law five years, the German period of 10 years will apply for this purpose. So that is uh, the German approach on that. Here, the best method rule has been discussed. Um, unfortunately, um, some new topics like digital business models or the uh, mandatory value chain analysis for for your master file um, has not been addressed in this uh, in this guideline. Um, criminal tax aspects will be, become more relevant in the future. And um, yeah, the language, that seems to be a major issue for Germany. 
you will see that uh, a lot of uh, uh, yeah guidance or um, paperwork um, has been done on on language requirements. Um, here, as already mentioned, it is um, uh, implemented the right of the tax authorities to select an alternative transfer pricing method. Um, and the request for your documentation, for your transfer pricing documentation, um, is possible not only in tax audit situations, in Germany, you don't have to provide your transfer pricing documentation together with your tax filing. Um, you have to provide it only on request of the tax inspector um, during a tax audit, yeah. typically years later. That has been changed now. Um, the tax authority can ask you now um, uh, outside of the tax audit um, for your documentation. Uh, in case there are specific situations or uh, they have the impression um, there is a specific situation and uh, need to ask for a documentation. So this kind of safe harbor only to uh, provide your documentation years later, um, yeah, that is, not, is, is, is still not uh, available anymore. And uh, finally, the German tax inspector uh, has now or has been invited to uh, discuss with the taxpayer um, preliminary discussions uh, on, on venture pricing situations. So that is a signal for, um, yeah, discussing or solving um, transfer pricing situations on a contemporaneous basis, not even in a tax audit case uh, years later. So that is the German idea how uh, um, this type of discussion should should happen more in the presence instead of uh, in the future. Um, one key element is the obligation to cooperate. Um, the appetite for more data is uh, uh, expressed heavily. Um, you have, or the tax inspector will have the right to ask you for anything what has to do with your transfer pricing system, uh, including emails, messenger, messenger service messages, messages, WhatsApp, for example, or any other uh, electronic communication. So everything could be. Uh, part of or could be seen as part of your transfer pricing system and uh, therefore could be asked by the, by the tax inspector. Um, so for me, that is a clear signal. Uh, transfer pricing will become much more transparent uh, as in the past. And that is the German uh, idea how it should work in the, uh, in the future. Um, an argument um, to the tax inspector, um, my subsidiary is in China or in the US, I don't have access to any information or to any documents will not be accepted anymore. So it is assumed that you as a, um, uh, a taxpayer will have access to those data, data and you will have to provide uh, it to the, to, the, uh, to the tax inspector. Um, that is um, that is uh, new here in this document. Um, a, a lot of um, legal terms not being defined well. So there's a term like certain probability. What is a certain prob probability? There is no uh, guidance uh, how that term is defined. It is then the decision of your tax inspector how he will define a certain probability that a specific uh, situation will occur or a term like vagueness um, is not defined. Um, so I think that will open the door for um, 
discussions in the future um, with, with your tax inspector. I think that uh, could have been solved better than it has been solved here or has been uh, suggested in this uh, guideline. Um, and um, I'm not happy with with uh, with terms like that because that will not uh, improve the uh, relationship between taxpayer and tax authorities. Um, I see more the risk that this will lead to to more discussions about uh, those uh, terms not being well defined. The language requirements. That's a famous point here. Uh, they spent uh, four paragraphs on language requirements. Um, it is still German uh, being the official language for your transfer pricing. Even the master file, and that was my view uh, since last December, uh, even the master file, uh, what is by, by nature an English uh, document, um, has to provide it has to be provided in German um, only on request on written request by, uh, to the tax authority you can ask for a preparation of your master file in English so the normal situation is a master file a local file anything else has to be uh, provided in German only on request and uh, maybe uh, with with major difficulties um, you will be able to uh, provide uh, English uh, documents or, or any other language. So that is, um, from my perspective, not what should happen uh, um, in, in the, uh, those days that, that the text, uh, that the country like Germany is um, focusing so much on, on his uh, local language. The best message rule, we discussed that already uh, with, uh, or when we talked about the foreign tax law. Um, you as a taxpayer has to define the best method. And uh, on the other hand, the tax authority has the right to select its view on the correct transfer pricing or the best method. And you as a taxpayer um, will have to provide information to support the position of the tax authority. That is the way how the German tax inspector will uh, challenge you uh, in the future or will have or can challenge you in the future uh, when he has a different view on your transfer pricing policy. Timing, again, um, the time when you will determine your transfer pricing is relevant. Um, the price setting uh, uh, situation, um, the outcome testing situation should uh, be possible uh, or, or price setting outcome testing model should, uh, should work uh, in the future as well. Um, not that critical. Um, the power of estimation. I think that is a major point here in this guideline. Um, here is some more uh, right established for the tax inspector to um, yeah, uh, adjust your uh, transfer price when he has the view that uh, your price is from his perspective not correct. Um, he can, with arguing uh, that, that there is a high possibility that that is, this transfer pricing is not correct, that he will have the right to estimate to his advantage. I think that is a critical point, um, and I expect some more discussions on that um, in the future. Um, the takeaway on that is because that applies for uh, cases in the past as well. That is not uh, straightforward to, uh, to, the, to the coming years. That is already applicable to all years um, uh, under audit um, from now. Um, my recommendation is um, review your existing documentation file 
for all open years. Um, check your documentation against the new requirements and uh, rework the documents or complete the documents uh, based on, on those new uh, uh, requirements um, to avoid any risks in that. And um, I think that is, that is a clear uh, recommendation. Unfortunately, the German have missed the opportunity to, uh, yeah, to rework the, the, the free guidelines, the set of guidelines, and to prepare one document. Maybe that will follow when we have a new um, uh, Minister of Finance as of, uh, of uh, October after the elections, but you will, yeah, you never know. So that is um, a quick ride through the latest uh, developments in Germany. From my point of view, we are good in time with, uh, with that um, presentation. And um, in case of any questions, uh, I will be happy to, to answer your, yeah, to answer your questions. All right, there doesn't seem to be any questions from the audience unless someone wants to provide any questions at the moment. See. From my side, thanks a lot, Carson. Just, just one more one question from my side, Carson. Yeah. Are the tax authorities from Germany allowed to use Hinside? Because in a we see in case law that this is being considered not valid when, for example, he's using the current data and not the past data. When, when, when you did the benchmark yourself, and let's say a set of the cost match is appropriate, but then he arrives with the resale minus or the TNNM, but he's using present data. And um, yeah, that, that is something we see. Um, um, in, in practice, on a daily basis, uh, that they use hindsight. Um, mm -hmm. Officially, they reject that. Uh, but uh, yeah, we are often confronted with, with uh, discussions uh, like that. Um, mm -hmm. So that depends on the individual tax inspector how he will approach that. But. Um, in the meantime, I'm not surprised to have that type of discussion. Mm -hmm. I agree. Thanks for clarification. All right, I think there doesn't seem to be any more questions. So uh, thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. And thank you again to Karsten for presenting um, today's topic. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions for Karsten, you can always email him or email us at TPA. Um, and yeah, I would like to wish you all a nice uh, good evening. See you in the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Nope,